Thank you to Dawn Power Wash Spray for teaming up with me on today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are jumping into some spring cleaning. I know my house personally definitely needs a little TLC, so we are going to go ahead and tackle like the main living area and the kitchen and just get into all those areas that I don't always clean in. But before we get into that, I did wanna share a new recipe that our whole family has been loving and I know that you guys will too. So I am going to just do a quick tidy in the kitchen and then share that recipe. And then once we are all done with that, we will jump on into all of the super, super satisfying deep cleaning motivation. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. As you saw, I do have my spring cleaning list all set up on my phone. That's just how I'm kind of organizing everything this year. I usually try to have some type of list, whether I write it out or whether I do it on my phone somehow or some way I have a list going on and that way I'm like not going to be forgetting anything and I'm just making sure that I'm going to be checking everything off my list that I wanted to get done. But you'll have to let me know how you tackle spring cleaning. Do you usually do it all in one week or do you kind of break it up into a whole month and then also do you break things up by task or do you kind of break things up by space and room i feel like i kind of do mostly the spaces like i will tackle my kitchen and my living room but i will do like the baseboards all in that whole area and then another day and another time i will kind of move into my bedroom and do kind of the same different chores or tasks in the bedroom and so on and so forth which also reminds me, this is definitely not going to be my only spring cleaning video. I do have another one coming and then maybe even a third one. I'm not totally sure. It will kind of depend on how long everything takes me, but there will definitely be a part two to this. So stay tuned for that. I have like my bathrooms and my bedroom. And then also we have our entire basement that I want to spring clean. So we have lots more satisfying deep cleaning coming your way. Also, let me know if you have already done your spring cleaning this year, or if you are like me and just kind of starting to get started with it. If you haven't gotten started yet or you're still working on it, I would love for you to kind of spring clean along with me. And if you are just kind of following along with me, definitely tag me over on your socials and we can just kind of do this together. All right, now I have the kitchen nice and clean and our counters wiped down. So we are going to quickly make that recipe and then we'll get into actually spring cleaning. The recipe that I'm gonna be sharing is a sheet pan, honey, garlic, chicken, and veggies meal. It is so, so delicious and it's super, super easy to make as well. So we are going to go ahead and jump on into that. And then once we are done making that, we're gonna jump on into all of the deep cleaning that we have going on today. So this recipe I actually found on Pinterest a while back. I will try to link the exact recipe down below, but of course I will be having a recipe card in here for ease so you can go ahead and screenshot that recipe. To start out, you're going to preheat your oven to 425 degrees and then we are going to get started on making the sauce. And so to make the honey garlic sauce, you are just going to grab a medium saucepan and you're going to add in half a cup of brown sugar, one tablespoon of garlic, one teaspoon of ginger, half a teaspoon of onion powder, one quarter cup of soy sauce, one quarter cup of honey, and one and a half cups of water. And then go ahead and just whisk that all together, heating on a medium heat until it starts to boil. 
And then while that's heating up, you're going to add a half a cup of water into a bowl along with three tablespoons of cornstarch and just kind of mix that up and that's going to create a slurry that will end up thickening your sauce really nicely. Then once your sauce is boiling on the stove, you're going to turn the heat down a little bit and add in your cornstarch mixture and then go ahead and just stir that up and then keep heating that and stirring that until it gets really nice and thick and kind of coats the back of a spoon. Now while that is cooking, you are just going to get your chicken and your veggies all ready. One quick tip that I did want to share is how to prep your chicken tenders. All you're going to do is grab that little piece of fat and then I just use a paper towel just to get a good grip on it and then you just pull that through a fork and it will completely pull that out of your chicken tender and make it super easy. Then once you have all of your chicken tenders prepped, you are going to slice in half lengthwise all of your baby carrots and then make sure all of your broccoli florets are cut into bite-sized pieces and then you are just going to start assembling it onto your sheet pan. And then you're going to add in about three quarters cup to one cup of the sauce onto your sheet pan and then you'll be able to add a little bit more of that sauce into your sheet pan dinner once it's done cooking. Then you'll pop your sheet pan dinner into the oven for about 15 minutes or until the chicken is fully cooked and all of your veggies are fork tender and that is it. It is super, super simple. We also love to add in some sesame seeds on top of this, but that's totally optional. And this is one of those recipes that reheats really well, especially if you kind of undercook your veggies a little bit. So I will typically make all of this and we will have it in one meal. And then I will just put it in the fridge and have leftovers the next day. <laughs> Once I was finished cooking the sheet pan recipe, I wanted to clean as I cook and get all those dirty dishes clean and put away. And I'm super excited to be teaming up with Dawn today to share the Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray with you. This stuff has been a staple in my kitchen ever since I found out about it last year, and it's definitely here to stay. One of the things I love about it is just how much easier you can clean your dishes with it, which also means it cuts down significantly on the time that you have to spend washing your dishes. I know I have been raving about this stuff for several months now, but if you haven't had a chance to try it yet, all you do is spray, wipe, and rinse. Just spray the Dawn Power Wash to spray on your dirty dishes, then wipe them down and last rinse them off. It is unreal how quick and easy it cleans your dishes. And because of the spray activated suds, there are no more having to soak your dishes in tons of soapy water. And you don't have to use a ton of elbow grease scrubbing them because it clings right onto the food messes, making it really easy to just wipe it right off. Over the past several months, the Power Wash Dish Spray has helped me get back into the habit of cleaning as I cook, and it's also been such a game changer in helping me spend less time in the kitchen cleaning dishes after meals, and giving me more time to do things I actually want to be doing, like spending time with my kids. I have loved hearing from so many of you, just letting me know how you tried out the Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray, and how much you love it too, but if you haven't tried it yet, I would seriously urge you to. I know you are going to love it. Also, I did want to share that it comes in several different scents. They have the original fresh scent along with the green apple, which is my personal favorite. They also have a citrus one, and now they even offer a free and clear option as well. And another great thing is once you've finished up your bottle, you don't need to go out and get a whole new one. Instead, you can pick up one of the refill bottles and just take the reusable sprayer off your old bottle and put it right onto the refill bottle and you're all set. This is amazing because not only does it reduce waste, but it also saves money as well. So if you want to pick up a bottle for yourself or you just need to order a refill bottle, I will leave the link down below so you can go ahead and pick one up. Oh, 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 oh,
keeps getting better It only gets better All right, next on my list is to start with the deep spring cleaning. The first place I wanna start is in the kitchen just because I already do have everything like kind of nice and baseline cleaned, I guess. But I'm gonna start in the kitchen and then once we are done with that, then we're going to move into the living room area. And then once we're done with that, I'm going to go back through and do like all the baseboards in this whole big area and like the windows and like all that kind of stuff that kind of falls under <laughs> everywhere here. So let's go ahead and get this place looking nice. We can drive all, drive all, drive all night. We can drive so here I'm just putting on a new pair of socks so that I can keep our countertops clean since I am going to be standing on them just to wipe down my upper cabinets. And I know you guys see me wipe my cabinets down more often than when I'm just spring cleaning, but usually I just do like a light wipe down. Whereas here I'm actually getting up on the countertops and just giving it a really nice deep clean up here and making sure that I'm not going to be missing any spots. And I'm also making sure to wipe down the top ledge of our cabinets as well. And to wipe everything down, I'm just using my general purpose e-cloth with water. So tackling my fridge is always something that I plan on keeping up with after spring cleaning and I never do. It's just one of those things that's like out of sight, out of mind. I never see the top of my fridge, I guess because I'm not tall enough. And so I just never really think to clean up there until I stand on my cabinets and I'm just reminded of how disgustingly gross it gets up there. So to clean the top of my fridge, I'm first just doing a quick dry dusting with paper towels. And anytime I am dealing with a ton of dust like this, I really do like to use paper towels. I usually don't use them a whole lot. A lot of times I just use my reusable cloths. But like I said, when I am dealing with a ton of really, really cakey dust, I just like to use paper towels so I can go ahead and throw those away and not have to go through a ton of rags. So at first I'm just doing a dry dusting and then once I get most of that dust wiped off and vacuumed up, I am just going to be spraying my multi-purpose cleaner on top and then using a new cloth to kind of wipe everything down and get it nice and clean. Next on my list is our light fixtures. Now, I think I've cleaned these maybe once since we lived here and we have lived in this home about three years. Every time I clean them, I'm just always baffled at how hard it is to clean them 
which is also the reason why I don't clean them that often. And you will kind of see me struggling to figure out exactly how I can clean these very well because like I said, they are pretty difficult to get cleaned. And for some reason today, it really clicked with me on why these actually are so difficult to clean. And if you notice, we do have our stove right below them. We don't have a range hood. So these get so dirty because it's not just dust on them, but it's also like the grease and whatever that kind of sticky stuff is from the stove. And so I think that's really what happened here. So first I started using my multi-surface cleaner and a cloth and that did not work. And then next I grabbed my steam cleaner and tried to do that thinking that that was for sure gonna work. Nope, it did not either. And then I finally figured out I just needed an abrasive sponge just to kind of work some of that grease off. And so I found an abrasive sponge along with my multi-surface cleaner and that really seemed to do the trick. Now it did take a little bit of elbow grease, but once I was all done, it really just made the biggest difference. I didn't really realize that it was going to make the biggest difference here. But as you could see in the beginning, there really was a lot of dirt and dust just kind of like caked onto it. And so now it just looks like it's a totally new light fixture. And I feel like that's kind of how it goes. A lot of times we focus on the bigger items thinking like, you know, once everything's picked up, it really just looks much cleaner and it does, but we really underestimate the impact of the smaller things. So like wiping down your rails, wiping down your baseboards, cleaning off your light fixtures, little things like that really do make a big impact and just make the whole space feel a ton, a ton cleaner. So if you have been putting those off, I urge you to go ahead and give those a shot today and just make sure to tackle those kind of smaller things and see what a big difference it can make in your own home. All right, this might just be like the most real life moment I have ever shared on my channel. It is pulling out the fridge and cleaning behind it. I think I've only done this once since living here and I don't think I shared it on my channel. So this is the first time you guys are seeing this and it was a disaster back here. It was so gross and just totally filled with dust and dirt and food and crumbs and toys and everything that you can imagine. Basically everything that's ever snuck back behind my fridge, I found it today but it was crazy to see the before and after on this one because as you saw, it was just a complete mess back here. And once I was done kind of wiping everything up, pulling up all of the debris and then giving it a good vacuum and also a good mopping, it just ended up looking like it was all brand new. So never feel like anything is too far gone. Once you give it a little TLC, you will be blown away at how brand new it looks and just how amazing it can look. So I hope me sharing this really raw and dirty real life moment just gives you a little bit of hope for your own home because even though it is gross and we don't like to admit it, I know we all have little spaces like this. So moving into the living room, I am just starting out by cleaning up the boys' forts. This has been something they have been really, really into lately. They definitely go back and forth into like different phases. Like one month, they will make a fort every single day without fail, either upstairs or downstairs or in their bedroom somewhere we have forts going on. And then they won't do it for like a few months. So 
I don't know whatever like triggers it, but right now they are totally in a fort making stage. And so the last several days we have woken up with forts all over our living room and I know they can definitely rebuild it. So because I have so much to do, I'm just going to go ahead and take that down and start doing a basic tidy in the living room. And then we will jump into all the deep cleaning in here. My first day on earth, I fell into your eyes. Look at how our galaxies collide. Every color of the spectrum, every star up in the sky. The planets aligned for you and I've known you. So here I am just taking my Dyson and starting to vacuum my couch. Now usually you guys see me use my Shark Apex Uplight and I love that vacuum so much, but just because I do have the cordless Dyson, I figured that would be a little bit easier in just doing like a quick vacuuming of our couch. And while I'm vacuuming the top of our couch cushions, I also wanted to get under the cushions and just make sure I'm doing a deeper clean inside and out. And then once I'm done doing that, I'm going to carpet clean our cushions. Now this is going to be a great option for you if your cushions don't don't come off of your couch and our cushions do actually have covers that come off but I started to pull the cushion covers off one time and they were so incredibly tight that I really got worried about being able to put them back on and so I have just been carpet cleaning my couch for the last year or so and it has worked pretty well but I am kind of getting tempted to actually go ahead and just pull all the cushions off and really pray that I can actually get them back on because like I said, they are just like a really, really tight fit. And I do have some concerns about not being able to get them put back on the right way and just not having them fit really right after that just because they are so, so snug. All right, the next thing on my list is to actually shampoo all of the couch cushions. I'm just struggling with these cushions. They are so giving me a run for my money, but I am going to be using my big carpet cleaner and I might honestly just be opening up a whole can of worms that I really should not be right now. But I'm gonna show you, we have like tons and tons of pet hair shoved into the carpet cleaner and I've never cleaned it out just because I've never really known how to. I found some screw holes. I think this is going to be how I open it up. And I'm gonna show you, it is so gross, but I feel like it'll be so much more effective if I can get it out, so, <sighs> gross. My first day on earth, you sang me a tune. Forever won't be long enough with you. And I'll never let you go. I have been fiddling with this machine for probably like 10 minutes. I took the side pieces off just thinking I could figure it out myself. And then I decided to do the brilliant thing of looking up a how-to video on how to empty it out. Yeah! I'm gonna put these back on and then I'll show you exactly how easy it is to clean this thing out. And it's literally the easiest thing. So time to get these guys back on and then I will show you how simple it is and we'll get this thing knocked out quick. So I hope that you can see how messy these are. I feel like sometimes the camera does not pick up on it all well and it kind of camouflages things, which normally I think would be a great thing, but you guys know I always try to share real life moments and just kind of not sugarcoat how real life is. And so I do wanna show you exactly how dirty these were to start, but Anyway, I'm sure you guys have seen me do this before. A lot of times I will just spot treat them and just clean them with my shampoo or attachments, but this is actually so much easier. Just laying them out like this in a row and being able to use your whole carpet cleaner right on them. You're not having 
having to like sit there on your knees and scrub and scrub you can just really run this right over them i don't know if it gets them 100 percent as clean as doing it with the attachments but it definitely gets them a lot cleaner and like i said it's way way easier to do this way so this time i just decided to go ahead and clean them this way and i definitely know that it cleaned them pretty well because in a minute you'll see how dirty the water was and it is disgusting. So it definitely did its job and I'm not disappointed in that at all. Also, I did wanna mention, I am going to be sharing a great tip for baseboards. This is something that has made such a big difference in how I clean my baseboards and just making it not so hard on my knees. So I'll be sharing that a little bit later on when we get into that part. Finally, I have all of the furniture cleaned and moved to the side, and so I'm going to start just kind of pulling up the rug and seeing what I find underneath it. Also, I do get a lot of questions about where we got our rug, so I will go ahead and link that down below if you're interested, but we have had this rug for the past several months and we have just loved it so much. I feel like we just all kind of lounge on the floor a lot more often because it is really cushy, and our dog, Emma, she actually stopped using her dog bed, which is why you guys haven't seen it around for quite a while because she just stopped using it and started just laying on the rug which to me means that it must have been pretty comfortable so we ended up moving her dog bed out of here since she just now lays on the rug so anyway all that to say it's definitely a rug that I would recommend if you are in the market for one I'm totally working up a sweat right now, but this is some good news right here. Definitely you can see there is a little bit of dirt and dust and just debris and stuff that was stuck underneath our rug. But if you have been here for like a couple years now, or if you've gone back and watched older videos, I think it was like a spring cleaning or a deep cleaning video I did back when we had like our old shag rug and I pulled it up and there was just dust and dirt everywhere under it. So anyway, we got again, another kind of like shag rug, which we have loved. It's been like so much more comfortable for ourselves and our pets. I have actually been really interested in this moment right here where I have taken up our rug for the first time since we got it several months ago. But the reason I've been really interested is to see if it's going to be the same situation as I had with our previous shag rug, or if it'll be better because I have been slow vacuuming the rugs too and I really think it's been so much better. Like if you look at all of the middle area, there's really like no debris. So this is such a good thing. If you have a rug, especially if you have a shag rug, something like a little bit more thick, if it can kind of like hold on to dirt and stuff a little bit easier, definitely make sure that you are slow vacuuming like on a more regular basis. I would recommend like every one to two weeks and I think it really does make a huge difference. I feel like this is totally totally proving my feelings on that. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this part all vacuumed. I'm also probably going to start doing the baseboards along here while I have the furniture out, and then we will go ahead and put the rug back down, put the furniture back down, and then I will get on to everything else. It's 
So to clean my baseboards, I am just using a multi-surface concentrate. You can get this in different brands, in different scents. There's just a ton to choose from, but I am just going to be adding about one tablespoon mixed with warm water, and then you can really use any rag that you have. And this works great because you have all of your solution already concentrated into your warm water, but then you're not having to actually like spray down your baseboards and have everything run onto your floor. I feel like it's a lot easier and it's also a lot cleaner. So this is something that I have done for years and definitely recommend if you are working on your baseboards. It's about what you mean. Next, I just wanted to steam up over the floor where our rug lays. I don't often get the opportunity to clean this area, and so while everything is taken up, especially the rug, I wanted to just make sure to take just a few minutes and get this area really nice and deep cleaned. So behind the TV stand is an area that I pretty much avoid like the plague. I just hate back here. It's like cluttered with so many cords and everything, which I don't even know what half of them are for. But back here, you just find dust and hair and cords, and I really just dread this. But I feel like I always feel this way, and then as soon as I get back here and do it, it really is just not as bad as you think it's going to be. So if you have an area like that, I would urge you to just go ahead and get it done, and it will end up making like a pretty big difference. Yeah. I got something. All right, we are making some super good progress right now. I have my list out. I did forget to clean our fan and I'm still gonna do that. I totally wish I would have done that before I even like pulled up the carpet, but I just forgot. So I still need to clean the ceiling fan. I still have to finish the rest of the baseboards, which is what I was working on right now. I also want to clean like the kitchen windows up in here. I am not going to do these ones just because they are so tall that we need to actually get a ladder out to do those ones. So those I usually do off camera and usually with Kyle's help because I am super, super fearful of heights. And then once we're done with that, I wanna do all the floors. And I think, I think then we are done. It still sounds like we have a lot, but we really don't. We've gotten almost all of it done. I'm feeling really good. I have like a little boost of motivation. I'm gonna tackle that ceiling fan before I go any further. Then we're gonna finish up the baseboards, get started on the windows and floors, and we're done. So to clean my fan, I just have this extendable duster. I got mine at either Home Depot or Lowe's. I can't remember which one, but I will link one down below in case if you need one as well. And as for my tip on cleaning the lower walls and your baseboards is grabbing a pair of these knee pads. I will link the ones that I have down below. They come in different colors and everything, but this was something that I knew I wanted to grab this year. I just wanted to try some out because doing my baseboards kills my knee. Every single year, I hate it. It drives me nuts. My knees feel so sore almost immediately. And so I ended up ordering this pair of knee pads. And once I put them on today and started wiping everything down, it was amazing just how much cushion it gave me. My knees were not sore at all. It wasn't like a pain to be down on my knees or anything because I did have that extra cushion. So if you were like me and dread doing baseboards and your lower walls because you hate being on your knees too, 
then definitely pick up a pair of these. It will make a huge difference. And I will have these ones linked down below, but they're also going to be saved in my Amazon favorites. My favorite place to be is right here Not thinking about what brings me down, yeah My favorite way to be without fear Is in the now, I'm learning how Fast life, no thanks, no I'm Doing just fine, one foot in another Floating, enjoying my freedom Seeing off I get better when I'm under the sun Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm under the sun ooh, 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 ooh. So I totally forgot that I had these knee pads on from when I was doing all of my baseboards but I guess they were just super comfy and I didn't even notice it so that's totally a win but anyway these e cloths are the best way that I've found to clean my windows all you do is just either grab this window cloth or you can even just grab a regular general purpose cloth and then pick up one of these window genies they work so incredibly well on cleaning your windows and just drying them and polishing them there are no streaks left behind all you do is clean them with water and it's great because they're reusable so you can go ahead and just wash them once you're done and you're not having to use a thousand paper towels so definitely a win go ahead and grab these if you guys haven't tried them out they are perfect for cleaning mirrors or windows Finally, we are getting to the end of it all. All I wanted to do is just give a quick vacuum to the rest of my hard floors and then also just mop everything to get everything nice and clean. You guys know I hate mopping, but I figured if I'm doing all this other deep cleaning, I might as well make sure to do the works on my floors and just make sure that everything is looking as nice as I can. So that is everything for part one of my spring cleaning. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you got tons of cleaning motivation. Like I'd mentioned before, there will be more spring cleaning videos coming, so definitely stay tuned for those. Also, there's going to be more decluttering videos coming your way to add on to my whole house decluttering series. And I also wanted to remind you to go ahead and check out the Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray if you have not already. Like I said before, this stuff has been a game changer for me and I know you are going to love it as well. So I will have that link down below for you guys. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you are not already and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.